Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to this special combined service, which is uh, the final Covenant Sunday service. And I pray that the covenant of the Lord unfailing will be fulfilled in every life. Yeah. That as the Lord has told us that this is 2020, there'll be a 2020 confirmation in every life in Jesus' name. Yeah. 2020 revelation. Yeah. 2020 success. And 2020 victory in your life in Jesus' name. Mark it down. To be a glorious year for you. For your family. For everyone. And the grace of God will be abundant in every life in Jesus' name. And you know, it's something interesting. That during the covenant time, Covenant months, we should be looking at the book of Job. And I say, Lord, for us here, I pray that today the Lord will open your eyes. You will see and behold and receive and embrace the great blessings of the Lord for you in Jesus' name. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this service. Thank you because you brought us together for a good thing. And we pray that your hand will touch every life in Jesus' name. Wake us up to our responsibility. Wake us up to the promises and provision you have for us in this year and for the rest of our lives in Jesus' name. Your covenant will not fail. Your power will not fail. The promises and provision will not fail. And we will not fail. Every one of us here, from the least to the highest, none of us will fail in Jesus' name. Reveal your truth to everyone now. Thank you, Father, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. 2020, amen. And I'm asking all those who are connected with us in all the regions and all the states of Nigeria, all the countries in Africa and beyond, and all those who are, who are connected with us on social media, give me your amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord, you can see that. We're looking at Job chapter 26. Job chapter 26. I'm reading from verses 2 and 3. Job chapter 26, verses 2 and 3. How hast thou helped him that is without power? How savest thou the arm that has no strength? How hast thou counseled him that has no wisdom? And how hast thou plentifully declared the thing? as it is. You see what Job is telling us? You see what Job is asking us? The Lord is asking you a question today. And he's asking you, how have you helped the helpless? How have you helped the fainting? How have you helped the fatherless? How have you helped the suffering, the people who are suffering? What help have you given? What counsel have you given? What hand have you given? What upliftment have you given? As we pass through life, we're going to meet people who are besieged by Satan. And Satan puts the boils on Job. And now his friends came and they saw him. They saw the boils. They saw the calamity. They saw the oppression. They saw the sickness. They did not know the source. But the question is, when you see people who are sick, people who are downtrodden, people who have satanic affliction upon them, how hast thou held him that is without power? 
the people who are helpless, who could not help themselves, how have you helped them? Here comes David. And David knew that Saul was a king. He had met him, he had heard of him, that this was their king. And the king had depression. And the king had oppression. And the king had demonic attack and affliction. And then David was called there. And he used his harp. And he used his instrument. And he preached the king. And helped him. My question is, and Job's question is, and God's question is, how have you helped the demonized? The people who have lost their focus, they have lost their way, and they do not know the way to go. Do you just say, okay, he's depressed? Okay, he has a demonic spirit. He has a demonic affliction. How have you helped the people that are thinking of suicide? And they say, it's better for them to even die. Here comes Moses. Moses lifted up his hand, and then Joshua will overcome in the battle. And when his hands went down, the Amalekites overcame Joshua, uh, Joshua. And then they saw that the hands of Moses were heavy. He needed help. How have you helped the people who are heavy, downtrodden, they're weak, they don't have any strength, and the duty they ought to carry, they cannot carry that duty. How have you helped like Aaron and Og? And he came on either side and made his hand steady. How have you helped the people that do not have any help? The people that do not have any support, the people that do not know how they are going to make a success of the calling God has given them. There are people who are discouraged in life. There are people who do not know where the next meal will come from. And they are packing everything together. What am I going to do? Have you helped them? Have you counseled them? Have you been of help to anyone? There are those who are sick and they've gone here and there. They do not know how their sickness will be over. Are you helping anybody? Are you just going through life? Give me, give me, help me, help me, touch me, touch me, prophesy to my life, do this for me. What are you doing for other people? That's why the Lord is asking us the question, in this new year, how hast thou held him that is without power? How hast thou saved the arm of him that has no strength? The one that has no strength, that has no power, that has no ability, that has no skill, and is wondering, why am I here in life? Why am I here on earth? Who is going to help me? Are you looking around? Are you helping somebody? Are you touching somebody's life? Are you helping them to carry their load? Look at verse 3. How hast thou counseled him that has no wisdom? There are many people that have problems. They do not know what wisdom they're going to have. And how they're going to be wise enough to solve their problem. And yet to see them. Do you just talk about their problem? Do you just uh, look down on them? Are you one of the people going about saying so and so as a problem? He doesn't know how to solve. He's been in this problem for such a long time. Is he going to solve this? Are you helping them? Are you counseling them? Are you touching the lives of the people that have no wisdom? How hast thou plentifully, have you given time and plentifully declared the sin as it is? That's what the Lord is asking us because, you know, it's the help you give that will be multiplied and given back to you. I'm talking to you today on receiving heavenly help by offering earthly help. Here you are on earth. And there are people who need help on earth. And when you give earthly help, natural help, physical help, the help you can give in your own human way. You give human help and then comes heavenly help for you. And that's actually what eventually got Job out 
of his problem, you'll come out of your problem. All the heartache, all the affliction, you'll come out in Jesus' name. Hey, look at Job chapter 29. He offered hell to all the people. He didn't give him hell, but he offered hell to all the people. And as he offered human hell, he offered earthly hell, heavenly hell came unto him. This year, you'll be going around, and anybody that needs help, a helping hand, you will help. I will help. And as we give a human help, earthly help, heavenly help will come to us in Jesus' name. I'm reading to you from Job chapter 29. Look at verse 11. Job 29 verse 11. When the ear heard me, heard me in the past, then it blessed me. And when the eye saw me, it gave witness unto me, because I delivered the poor that cried. You see that? I, Job, I helped them when I was all right, when I was strong, when I was healthy. I gave help to them, and your friends, you come to me now. You're just looking at me in my predicament and affliction. What help are you giving? Because I delivered the poor that cried, and the fatherless and him that, that, uh, that had none to help him. I helped the blessing of him that was ready to perish came upon me. And I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. Look at that. There are widows that we need to help. And you see, when you give that earthly help, heavenly help will come to you. Give me a good amen. amen. He said, He caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. I put on righteousness and it closed me. My judgment was as a robe and a diadem. I was eyes to the blind, the people that couldn't find their way and they couldn't make out where they're going to go because they are blind and I can see. And so I said, come on, you can climb on my shoulder or you can just hold my hand. I will take you to the place you need to get to. I was eyes to them and I was feeling each to the lame, the ones that could not walk, I carried them. I carried them on my back. I carried them on my shoulder. And I made sure that even those people that were lame, I moved them forward. That's a help. And Job said, I did help like that. I was a father to the poor. A father to the poor. He has nowhere to fend for himself, to provide for himself. So I became his father. I adopted him. I adopted her. And the cause which I knew not, I searched out. I break the jaws of the wicked. Those who are oppressing others, I didn't congratulate them. Those who are attacking others, afflicting others, I didn't help them that said, that's good, well done. No, I broke their jaws and I plucked the spoil out of his teeth. Then I said, I shall die in my nest. I shall multiply my days as the sand. You see what he did? He helped people. You will help people. I said, you will help people. Look at uh, verse 23. And they waited for me as for the rain. When, when it was dry season in their lives, and they were weary, dreary, and they were sweating profusely, they waited for me because when I come, I will give them some help. I'll be like rain unto them. And they open their mouth wide as for the latter rain. You see, that's why God looked at that man. And God blessed that man. As you help others this year, the Lord will help you. Heaven will help you. The power of God will help you. Let's look at the results. We're looking at uh, Proverbs chapter 42, and I'm reading from verse 10. Proverbs chapter 42, verse 10, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job. 
your captivity is turned. Your sickness is removed. All the affliction is gone from your life in Jesus' name. The Lord turned the captivity of Job. Look at this, look at this. When he prayed for his friends. Those people needed forgiveness. He forgave them. They needed understanding. He gave them understanding. They needed to be restored into the right way. There were the people criticizing him. There were the people blaming him. There were the people that did not offer any help to them. And the Lord said, Job, pray for your three friends. Otherwise, I'll deal with them. No, God, I won't, I won't pray for them. Deal with them. See my own affliction and see what I've gone through. And they have hit all these criticisms and discouraging words on me. You want me to pray for them so that you will not deal with them? Uh-uh. I will not pray for them. Deal with them. Job did not say that. He helped them. Why? Because when you offer earthly help, heavenly help will come to you. The Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job as much as he had, twice as much as he had before. Looks like that is going to be fulfilled in your life. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 11. In Proverbs chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 24. He wants you to help others. Don't go through life selfish. Don't go through life only looking at yourself. I want to be happy. I want to be healthy. I want to be prospered. I want to have this. I want to have that. Forget yourself now for some time. Help others. Lead others. Increase others. Make others happy. And make other people feel there is something to live for on earth. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 11 and i'm reading from verse 24 it says there is he there is that scattereth and yet increases the people that scatter their goods they scatter their money they distribute what they have and they give to other people they increase why because when you offer us hell heavenly help will be given unto you look at this in verse 24 there is a him, there is that withholdeth more than his meat, but it tendeth to poverty. The people that hold what they have. I don't have much. I don't have much. I cannot give anything. I cannot help anyone. Verse 25, the liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. He that watereth shall be watered also himself. The Lord will water you. As you water other people, as you refresh other people, as you help other people, as you lift up other people, the Lord will multiply all your giving and all your help and get it back to you in Jesus' name. We're coming to Galatians chapter 6. In Galatians chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 6. Galatians chapter 6, we're reading from verse 6. It tells us in verse 6, Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. It says, those of us who are being taught, you're in the class, you're in the school, you're in the church, and there's somebody teaching you. There's a teacher teaching you. There's a pastor teaching you. There is a leader leading you. There is a prayer warrior praying for you. There is a helper helping you that makes your life what your life ought to be and puts your family straight in the way it ought to be. It says, don't hinder him, help him. Because, first of all, he is sowing something good into your life, so you need to communicate back, let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. 
be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whose whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If we sow help, if you sow good words, if you sow counsel, if you sow encouragement, if you sow upliftment, if you sow something positive, the same will be sowed back into your life. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Let us not be weary in well doing. This is the year of well doing. You will do well. You will do good. And as you do well and do good, goodness will come back in multiplied fold in your life in Jesus' name. Let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not, as we have therefore opportunity. Let us do good unto all men, as we therefore have opportunity. What opportunity is that? Somebody is sick, somebody is poor, somebody is penniless, somebody is fatherless, somebody is a widow, somebody is downtrodden, somebody is discouraged, somebody is sick, somebody is helpless. Help them, help them, as we therefore have opportunity. Let us do good unto how many people? Tell me, tell me. Tell the Lord. Do good unto all men, especially unto them who are the households of faith. As I said, on this final covenant Sunday, we're talking on receiving heavenly help by offering earthly help. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the normal character of helpers in the faith. Helpers in the faith. We see people in the faith. They know the Lord. You know the Lord. I know the Lord. And we congregation, children of God, we know the Lord. What's the normal character of everyone? Helpers in the faith that you help the faith of others, you help the strength of others, you help the understanding of others, you help them to earnestly contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints, the normal character of helpers in the faith. Number two, the numerous calls or cries for help by our fellow men, people around us. Your wife needs your help. Your husband needs your help. Your children need your help. Your parents need your help. The members need your help. The pastor needs your help. The worker needs your help. The members and the ministers need your help. Your neighbors need your help. And fellow pilgrims on their way to heaven, they need your help. Some of them are getting discouraged. Some are almost backsliding. The numerous calls for help by our fellow men. Point number three, the new commission. The word commission here has two parts. Number one, the commission the Lord has given us. Number two, the commission. He gives us a salesman. He says, take this out. Sell this one. Publicize this one. Give this one to others. Let them buy this. Let them get this. Let them receive this. And if you do it right, I'll give you your commission. That's the commission we're talking about. There's a great commission. And there is also the commission you're given when you have gone out as a salesman and you've done what you're to do. The new commission for helpers on the field. The new commission for helpers on the field. Look at number one, the normal character of helpers in the faith. We're coming to Job chapter 26. And I'm reading from verse 2. Job chapter 26. And I'm reading from verse 2. How hast thou held him that was without power? What's the character of a real child of God who is a helper? Somebody has no power 
to overcome temptation. He doesn't have the skill, the knowledge to overcome all the challenges coming upon him and upon her. And you know it. You go to them, your character will be not to criticize, not to put, put them down, not to condemn them. You offer help so that can, they can have power. He is depressed, he is discouraged, and you go there to take the depression, the discouragement away. That will be your character. You're looking for somebody every time and every day. You are helping them. How savest thou the arm that has no strength? The people who are weak. And they're weaker than the challenges before them. And they cannot face life with strength and with courage and with might. You don't say they're weak, I'll make them weaker. They're down, I trample on them. The character, normal character of a helper in the faith, they do not have the arm and the strength. You're strengthening them with your words. You're strengthening them with your counsel. You're strengthening them with the promises of God. It takes time. You sit with them. It takes time. You walk with them. It takes time. You go to them. It takes time. You expend both energy and strength and life and time so that you'll be able to minister unto them. Look at verse 3. How hast thou counseled him that has no wisdom? I hear so and so is, you know, just here and there. He's having a lot of problems. You know, they will not come for counseling. And there are problems, okay, when they get to the end of their rope and when they hit the wall, then they will know they ought to seek counseling. Go to them yourself. Don't wait until they come. Then your group, and then your district, then your region, then your state. You know them, you know the problems they have. You'll not be waiting for them. Let them come. You will go to them where they are. You will offer help. And you're not offering the help as, you know, a Mr. Know-It-All, a Madam Know-It-All. I hear you have problem, and you will not ask anybody. I hear you have problem, and you'll not check off from anybody. Okay, now, you didn't come. I have come to you. Don't go there with an air of pride. If, any, if somebody has fallen, if somebody has fallen into maybe error, is fallen into calamity, is falling into affliction because of his foolishness, don't go there and whip him on the head. The character of helpers in the faith is that you go there with humility. You go there with grace. You want to lift up the people that have fallen in. And how hast thou plentifully declared the sin? As it is, your counsel was the truth. Your help was the truth. That's what the Lord is saying. And I pray that this new year, you'll be a helper. I will be a helper. I will help you. I said I will help you. You will help me. We will help each other. And the work of God will prosper in our hands. In Jesus' name. How have you helped the people that have no power? What's her character? What's her normal character? What's her attitude? If we're going to be who God has called us to be, we're looking at a second Samuel chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 11. Second Samuel chapter 10. We're reading from verse 11. And he said, if the Syrians be too strong for me, Thou shalt come and help me, then thou shalt help me. And, but if the children of Ammon be too strong for thee, then I will come and help thee. Do you see the two groups talking there? And do you see them discussing with each other? I have my load to carry. You have your load to carry. I will not be self-centered. I'll be looking at you while I'm carrying my load. And if your load is too heavy for you to carry, I will come and help you. I'll still carry mine. But if I, as I have extra strength and I see that you are, you are kind of falling under your own heavy load, I will come and help you. But my brother, my sister, don't be self-centered. 
and don't always be looking down. Look at me, too. If my load is heavier than I can carry, I don't even need to call you. Just watch. Just watch. And as you see that my load is heavier than I can carry, don't make fun. Don't criticize. Don't gossip. Don't go about saying, look at him, he preaches, he has all these promises, he has all this knowledge, he cannot carry his load, don't make fun, come and help. And I pray that as we do that from neighbor to neighbor, from brother to brother, from sister to sister, from family to family, this year nobody will fall under a heavy load in Jesus' name. Look at that verse 11 again, and he said, If the Syrians be too strong for me, then thou shalt help me. But if the children of Ammon be too strong for thee, then I will come and help thee. You will help your brother. You will help your sister. You will help your husband. You know, some wives have forgotten that the reason for marriage is that God said, I will make him and help meet for him. Help meet. Some people have forgotten that. And they, they think that marriage is, you know, I want to have my way 50 50. I, you know, this must happen, that must happen. And if I'm not happy, nobody will be happy in the family. If I'm not satisfied, nobody else will be satisfied in the family. And you know what? If you live together for one year, if you live together for three years, you already know what you can do that will annoy the woman. If you live together for five years, you already know what you can do that will irritate a man. And so there are some people, oh, they've forgotten that God said, I will make her a help meet for him. You are there to help. I pray we will not forget. Husbands, we will not forget. I can't hear the husbands. And wives, we will not forget in Jesus' name. Uh, and you know what? You know what? The reason why workers are there, the workers have forgotten that they to help the pastor. Because if the load is too heavy, that, that's why God told Moses, he said, choose 70 men and I'll put the same spirit on you. I'll put that spirit on them so that they will be bear the body with you and help you. There are workers who have forgotten that we are there to help the leadership. We're not there to, you know, do whatever we like and to enjoy ourselves. And uh, if the leader is not uh, pleasing us and saying what we want and saying it the time we want, then we're going to fight back and do this and that. You've forgotten something important. You need to offer earthly help so you can receive heavenly help. We're coming to Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Two are better than one, they have a good reward for their labor. For if one fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falls. For he has not another to help him up. Help him up. And we will have help in Jesus' name. The Lord will make you a helper. You know, if you go through life and you have real something to do, you cannot do it all by yourself. You need helpers. David needed helpers. And the helpers came. When you need helpers, the helpers will come. And then when other people need help, you will go there, you will help in Jesus' name. Say, I will help. Say it well, I will help. Let it sink into your subconscious, into your heart. I will help. God bless you, you are going to help. And in your life, help will never elude you. You will not miss help. 
You see all those uh, friends of Job? I don't understand how somebody can be a friend and is not lending a helping hand. He sees the man, you know, scrubbing himself and blood coming out of all the scraping and scrubbing and they still condemned him. They saw the man saying, Oh Lord, why didn't I die? Why did anybody come to say congrats to my mother when I was born? Why didn't I die as a child? They saw the man was depressed. They saw the man was down. They saw the old man, a father of many children, who had lost all the children, who lost all his cattle, who lost all his business, who lost everything. They couldn't offer a word of hell. There are some people who say they are Christians. Their Christianity doesn't have any record in heaven. They see those who suffer. They see those who are downtrodden. And all the time, what they are doing is they are putting him down. They are, they are trampling upon him. And they want to, even before the man dies, if, especially if a man is so depressed and he says, I want to die. I want to die. You want to die? Well, I'll help you die. And then they trample upon him to kill him what kind of people are those but even if they trample upon you you will not die i will not die but i will live in fact i'm still going to be of help say it i'm going to be of hell to all the people that refuse to help me and so God told Job, pray for them, pray for them. They need your prayer. They need your prayer. They will not pray for you, but pray for them. And as Job prayed for them, his captivity was overturned. This is the year, all you need to do, you have been, somebody, I've been praying and praying and praying and the problems are still there. You don't know what to do. Just start helping people just start lifting people just start encouraging people just start praying for people all your problems are solved in jesus name look at first chronicles chapter 12 first chronicles chapter 12 i'm reading from verse 16 first chronicles chapter 12 we're reading from verse 16 and there came of the children of benjamin and judah to the hold unto David. And David went out to meet them and, and uh, answered and said unto them, If ye become peaceably unto me to help me, I kill Goliath, but I need help. I played that musical instrument and I drove out the evil spirit in Saul, yet I need help. I've been specially chosen and favored, yet I need help. I've been anointed to be king, yet I need help. Don't look at people and say, well, they have enough already. They have money, they have job, they have this, they have that. So why should I help them? We all need help. And when you help other people, help will come to you. If ye become peaceably unto me to help me, mine heart shall be need unto you. That's what brings unity. That's what brings unity. I'm carrying a load, and then you are not adding to the load, but you are helping me to lift it up. That's what brings unity. But you know, somebody comes, you're lifting a load, and he puts another load on it. You're lifting a load, and he weakens you. You cannot carry the load very well. And then he looks at you after uh, depressing you like that, discouraging you, and after hindering you to move forward, he looks at you and he smiles, and he says, the Lord said we should be united together. But you are increasing my load. And then you're talking of unity, unity, unity. We should be united together. My heart will be knit together with you, I so bend down, and you help me to lead my load. And I bend down to help you to lift your load. We don't need to preach about unity. We're going to be united. We'll be united in Jesus' name. My husband, why is it you are not telling me your mind? And it's like you are reserved. 
my wife, why is it you're increasing my load? You are discouraging me. And instead of praying with me and seeing my affliction and bending down to lift my load with me, you are joining the people that are increasing my load, that are pressing me, and you are the inward, you are the, you are the home persecutor. And then you still say, love me, love me, united, be united with me. Unity comes as we help each other. You know what your husband needs? Help him. You know what your wife needs? Help her. And it is as you help like that, there'll be unity, there'll be love, and there'll be fellowship. Not that where, you know, pushing each other, and you're pushing him to the wall, and you are destroying him almost, and he cannot even stand on his two feet now. He was standing well, he was standing firm, before you got to him as a wife, before you got to her as a husband, and now he He's shaky, and part of his, the major part of his problem is the home. There is no help. And this woman was supposed to help. And he's only saying, my husband, do you love me? My wife, do you love me? Forget about that now. Help each other. And as you help, unity will come. I said unity will come. David went out in verse 17 to meet them and answered and said unto them, If you become peaceably unto me to help me, mine heart shall be needs unto you. But if ye become to betray me to mine enemies, seeing there is uh, no wrong in mine hands, the God of our fathers look thereof, and he built it. But see, Tina, then the Spirit came upon Amasai, who was chief of the captains, and he said, Thine are we, David, and on thy side, thou son of Jesse. Peace, peace be unto thee, and peace be unto thine helpers. Peace be unto your helpers. Peace be unto my helpers, for thy God helpeth thee, thy God helpeth thee. Then David received them and made them captains of the band, captains of the band. You know, look up here, David had battles to fight, in fact, the calling of David was that he will fight the Philistines. And uh, now the battles he had to fight, he needed an army, he needed captains. And uh, let's say, for example, these captains, uh, they came and they said, Well, come, I want to be captain, I want to be leader, I want to be this, I want to be that. Do you come to help me or do you come to hinder me? Don't talk about that. Whatever I would like to do, I will do. Just make sure that you choose us as captains. It will be foolish of King David to see somebody going to hinder him, going to destroy him, going to join the Philistines to defeat him and to destroy him and make him a captain. He must find out, have you come to help me? to do the will of God, to fulfill the will of God. And he said, thine we are, and we're here to help you. Only then could he make them captives over the bunch. And as we look at things this year, don't just be looking for opportunity. I want to be captain. I want to be leader. I want to be ruler. I want to lead that section. The question is, check up in your heart, are you come to help us? If you have come to help, everything you need will be given to you. If you have come to hinder, God will take you away from there so that you do not destroy the army of the Lord in Jesus' name. Good, good, amen. We're looking at Romans chapter 16. In Romans chapter 16, I'm reading from verse, uh, reading from verse 3 and from verse 4. Romans chapter 16, we're reading from verse 3. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus. Paul the Apostle said, I can tell you, 
I will not be where I am today if I didn't have some helpers. Uh, Paul, the apostle, I'm not ashamed to tell you. Yes, I'm an apostle. Yes, I pray. Yes, I know the word. Yes, I prophesy. Yes, I go about evangelizing. But you know what? I will not be where I am without my helpers in Christ Jesus. Helpers in the faith. We need to understand that no matter how strong a man may be, no matter how versatile a woman might be, everybody needs help. You need help. I need help. And we will help each other. Ah, they are not ready to help each other. I look at that again in Romans chapter 16, verse 3. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus. What did they do? Look at verse 4. Who have for my life laid down their own necks. For my life laid down my own necks. And he said, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Look at verse 5. Likewise, greet the church in their house. When they were, you know, were looking for church building, so we can meet Aquila and Priscilla, even without asking them. Because they're already helping a lot. And they're laying down their necks for the Apostle Paul. And the whole church knows about that. And so we're not going to tell them. We're not going to take their help for granted. Because they're doing a lot already. They said, don't say that. The house is available. So you can come and have worship there. I pray that this kind of mind and this kind of character, this new year, the Lord will grant every one of us in Jesus' name. Point number two now, the numerous calls for help by our fellow men. The numerous calls for help by our fellow men. We're looking at uh, Acts of the Apostles chapter 16. We read it uh, just now in the Bible reading, Acts of the Apostles chapter 16, and we're reading from verse 9. Here in verse 9, it says in verse 9, an vision appeared unto Paul by night, in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. You, mean, you spent too much time in Antioch. Come over into Macedonia and help us. You've given everything you've got in Jerusalem. We, we need also the gospel. Come over into Macedonia and help us. Many times we have been narrow-minded. We have, you know, stayed with our house fellowship, with our group, or with our district, or with the people, members of our family. And everything we're doing, we're doing everything to help only our little circle. But now, the vision of the Lord is given unto us. You've helped them much. Let them stand now. Help them to fend for themselves too. Help them to stand and have backbone. But you know, here is Macedonia. They're in darkness. Here is Macedonia. They do not have the gospel of the Lord. Here is Macedonia. They need help. Come over. Travel over. Get to us. Come over to Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, Immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Preaching the gospel, that's going over to Macedonia and helping them when people are fishing. And they have, and they cannot uh, do all the fishing by themselves alone. Come over and help them. We're looking at Luke chapter 5. In Luke chapter 5, we're reading from verse 4. Luke chapter 5, verse 4. It says in verse 4, Now when he had left speaking, 
he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. You know the story. I just need to explain something to you. Peter with Andrew and with his colleagues, they have, they have fished. They have uh, tried to catch fish all the night. They caught nothing. But Jesus came. He wanted to preach. He had nowhere to stand, nowhere to stay, so that you could preach. And Peter offered help and gave his boat to Christ. And Jesus preached out of that. Remember now, offer earthly help and heavenly help will come to you. After Peter, Simon Peter had offered that help. Now Jesus had cast your net over here. And he said, all the night we have, we have tried and we have caught nothing, but at thy word, I will. He received heavenly help, and now they caught a lot that their nets broke. Look at verse 5. Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night, and we have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy watch, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break. Look at this now. They enclosed a great number of fishes. They caught too much. And they couldn't carry everything in their net. Look at what happened. Verse 7. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other sheep, that they should come and help them. That they should come and help them. Look, so much has come in. And we cannot carry everything. We cannot lift everything. So come and help us. And they came and filled both sheep so that they began to sink. But you know the result of that? These people that came to help them, their names, James and John. It was through that they helped, they offered unto Simon Peter that they were now chosen to become disciples and apostles. They would have missed that. If they said, uh, you toiled on and you caught nothing, now somebody has told you, throw it there and you are catching much, and we are still not having anything. Carry your own body. Carry your own load. And go your own way. But no, they came to help. Look at it now in verse 11. Help other people. Spiritual help will come to you. Look at verse 11. And when they have brought their sheaves to land, they forsook all and they followed him. They followed him. You know the result of that? They became apostles. You know the result of that? They will be sitting on the 12 thrones of Israel, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. You know the result of that? Their names will not be at the gates of the heavenly city. Just because somebody had need, a colleague, and he said, come over and help us. And they also came to help. We're hearing the call to help. We're perceiving and feeling the call to help. Who are the people calling his followers? Those who are following Christ, they have challenges. We, we who are following Christ, we have challenges. Come over and help his followers. Number two, his flock, his flock, the flock of Christ, the people of God, we need help. Come over, come and help us. Don't come and hinder us. Don't come and criticize us. Don't come and scatter us. Don't come and discourage us. Don't come and blindfold us. Don't come and, and dominate over us. Come and help us. The flock of Christ needs help. Number three, the faithful. There are people who are faithful to the calling, but the load is getting heavier and heavier by the day as we're faithful and we're following the Lord. And you see us, we're getting slower in our stride because the load is heavy, because the journey is long, because the road is rough, but we remain faithful. Come, come and help us, the faithful. 
number four, come and help the fishers. He has sent us out. He has said, we're going to be fishers of men. And as we're fishing and we're gathering souls into the kingdom, we need those who will follow the converts. We need the people that will help us put the converts and the fish in the appropriate place. Don't just look at us struggling and then you are coming to church every Sunday, you are coming to Bible study every Monday, and you are coming every Thursday, but you do nothing. But come over and help the fishers. The people are becoming feeble. The journey is so long and the load is so heavy. We we'll become feeble, we we'll become tired, we we'll become weak, calm, and help the feeble. Don't criticize, don't look down, don't belittle, and don't hinder. Come and help the feeble. We are the mongers, those who are fatherless. They've not finished school yet, but they are fatherless. They've not got a job yet, they are fatherless. They don't have appropriate accommodation, but they are fatherless. Are you not looking at the fatherless in the congregation? Come and help the fatherless. They're those who are fainting. They are fainting because it's like there's no shepherd. It's just like there's no leader. There is no counselor. There's nobody to help them go this way or go that way. And they're trying to get married. They don't know how to get married. They're trying to get a job. They don't know how to get a job. They're trying to pay for this and pay for that. They do not have the wherewithal. They have given up life. And they are fainting. Now come over and help the fainting. There are those who are falling just falling they are falling and they have gone away from the fold and they're looking for somebody to say i don't have the courage to go back there myself i don't have the courage to go back to the lord myself if somebody will come to me and tell me will love you then i'll be sure that if i go back they'll not be making fun of me go and help those who are falling the people who have been forsaking everybody has forsaken them the family forsaking them everybody forsaking them they feel so lonely they feel so dejected they feel there is nothing to live for in life and they're saying i am forsaking i'm here if anybody thinks I'm worth anything, if anybody thinks I'm worth, uh, you know, lying, then let them come. Go to those who are forsaken and help them. There are those who are fearful. They're afraid of everything. They're afraid of their dreams. They're afraid of their deed. They're afraid of men. They're afraid of women. They're afraid of church. They're afraid of anything and everything. Why don't you get near them and go and give a helping hand to those who are fearful. The people who are faithless, they don't have faith for anything anymore. They, they are backsliding. They don't have faith for restoration. They are sick. They don't have faith for healing. They are poor. They don't have faith for provision. And um, you know, life is dreary and weary for them. Go after them and go after the faceless and help them. As you help them, the Lord will help you. As you help them, the Lord will lift you up. And you know what? There are some people they say, I don't know how to pray. You know what? Even if you don't know how to pray, just tell the Lord, Oh Lord, I need help here. I need help here. I need help here. I wish I could pray and bring heaven down upon myself. I'm going to do something. I'm going to help other people. That will, that will kind of help your prayer. That will increase the power of your prayer. As you help this and you help this, before you know what, help is coming to you. And everything you desire in prayer will be given in Jesus' name. And you know, the problem with some people is that, you know, I cannot be a worker now. I cannot, how can I be preaching to other people? But you know, you have knowledge that others don't have. You have light that others don't have. You have strength that others don't have. Even in your problem, even in your problem, the least person in deeper life has enough knowledge to go and teach somebody who even they make pastor or priest or whatever in other places, take that little you have and go and help. Help will come to you. Look at somebody coming. It's a man. 
is coming from the wilderness and as he approaches the city he saw a woman that is gathering two sticks so that he will cook the last meal and eat with her son she's a widow and then she will die and the child will die and the man of god he didn't know where he was coming from said Please get me a glass of water there. And as the woman was going to get her the water, he said, While you are coming, bring some food in your hand. And he, she said, I don't have any food. Actually, this is the last I'm cooking now, and it's barely sufficient for me and for my son. And the man of God said, Go and do as you have said. But the man of God is hungry. Help the hungry feed the hungry make for me first and then for yourself and i want to tell you if you will give that earthly help heavenly help will come to you and that cruise of oil will not fail and that barrel of meal will not fail until there comes abundance for the nation you will go through this period of famine you will not die in famine. You will not die in scarcity. But don't say you don't have something to help. That little you have, out of that, give. Out of that, give. I see abundance coming your way. I see success coming your way. I see promotion coming your way. Don't lessen the amen. Look at Luke, Luke chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 38. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Give, and it shall be given unto you. This year is a year of giving. And this year is a year of receiving. I see abundance coming your way. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down, shaking together, and running over, running over running over my brother i'm talking about you running over my sister i'm talking about your family running over my boy my girl there i'm talking about you running over your joy will run over your success will run over your inheritance will run over your possession will run over your health will run over he says, running over shall men give me to your bosom for with what for the same measure that she meets with thou, it shall be measured unto you again. It shall be measured unto you again. It shall be measured unto you again. The Almighty God will be your help. The Almighty God will be your helper. Great miracles in your life. Great abundance in your life. Point number three now, the new commission for helpers on the field. The new commission for helpers on the field. I'm looking at uh, 1 Samuel chapter, chapter 30. 1 Samuel chapter 30. 1 Samuel chapter 30. Don't just look at my face, uh, look at the Bible. I want to show you something here. This year, God will bless you. This year, abundance will come in your life. We're coming to 1 Samuel chapter 30. I'm reading here from uh, verse, I should have read uh, the whole chapter, but I'm going to spare you for your time. Let's look at verse 4. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no power to weep. Something happened that David began to weep. He lost the wives. He lost the property. The people came and cutted everything away. And the same thing with all the people that followed him. And it appears they've lost. Well, we're going to find what we have lost. They cried and cried and cried. In fact, the people were so discouraged. They thought they were going to stone David. But look at verse 8. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after the troop? Wipe your tears away. 
you need to pursue. I say you need to pursue. And you know, sometimes when you sustain loss and there are difficulties and challenges, and then you think this is too much. I cannot take this one. What am I going to get all this now? You'll get everything back. And David inquired at the Lord, uh, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them. And without fail, recover all. This year is a year of recovery. Brother, sister, I said this year is a year of recovery. You will recover all. The people who saw you weeping yesterday will see you laughing tomorrow. The people who saw you dejected last year, they will see you lifted up this year in Jesus' name. Verse 9, so David went and the 600 men that were with him and came to the brook Besom, where those that were left behind stayed. But David pursued don't be tired, you'll pursue. He and the 400 men, for 200 abode behind, which were so faint that they could not go over the broke bosom. And they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and gave him bread and he did eat and he made him to drink water look at this somebody they saw one person he was dying by the wayside he had been sick he was weak he had nothing to eat he had been abandoned and forsaken and then they saw him sick and weak helpless not even an israelite an egyptian in the field and he brought him to David. David didn't say, what have you brought him to me? I've lost my wives. I've lost my children. I've lost my property. I've lost everything. And then you are bringing an Egyptian to me. Forget about him. Get rid of him. Throw him away. Let's keep on pursuing. No. When you offer earthly help, heavenly help will be rendered unto you. It is through this help you are going to recover every good thing in your life. And you gave him a piece of cake and figs. Uh -uh. You've given him bread. You've given him water. He's a stranger. What's he doing with cake? What's he doing with any other thing that is dainty? Don't worry. We'll help him. We'll take care of him. I see you this year taking care of other people. And through that help and through that care, God will surprise you with miracles. Yeah. And he gave him a piece of a cake of figs and two clusters of, of, uh, of raisins. And when he had eaten, his spirit came again to him. For he had eaten no bread, nor drunk any water, three days and three nights. And David said unto him, to now ask him question. They didn't even ask him question before feeding him. Just hell. Just hell. Just hell. And hell will come your way. And David said unto him, To whom belongest thou? And whence art thou? And he said, I am a young man of Egypt, servant of an Amalekite, and my master left me because three days I gone, I fell sick. And we made the invasion upon the south of Sheretites and upon the coast which belongeth to Judah and upon the south of Caleb. We burnt Ziklag with fire 
and this is where all the property of David, David was. And David said unto him, Canst thou bring me down to this company? And he said, Swear unto me by God that thou wilt neither kill me nor deliver me to the hands of my master, and I will bring thee down to this company. And now when he had brought him down, Behold, they were spread abroad upon all the earth, eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah. And David smote them from the twilight even to the evening of the next day and they escaped they escaped not a man save four hundred and all that but look at verse 18 and david tell me and david tell me and david say it aloud put your name there i said put your name there let heaven make a decree concerning you. David recovered all. You will recover all. I said you will recover all. Look at verse 19. And there was nothing lacking to them. Neither small nor great. Neither son nor daughter. Neither spoil nor anything that they are taking to them. And David recovered all. Can you say that again? Oh, you are wise. You are wise. Say that again. You have recovered all in Jesus' name. But remember, but remember, heavenly help came because they rendered earthly help. Deuteronomy chapter 33. Deuteronomy chapter 33, you are now going to recover your all. Deuteronomy chapter 33, I'm reading from verse 3. Yea, he loved the people. All his saints are in thy hand, and they sat down at thy feet. Everyone shall receive of thy word. Have you received the word of God today? Look at verse 25 now. Verse 25, verse 25, um, Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 25, the shoes shall be iron and brass. As thy day, so shall thy strength be. There is none like unto the God of Jeshurun, who rideth upon the heaven. In thy hell, he will help you. And in his excellency, on this on the sky the eternal god is thy refuge underneath thee are the everlasting arms and he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee and shall say destroy them israel then shall dwell safely alone the fountain of jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine his heavens shall drop down dew heaven will drop refreshing blessing upon you in jesus name happy art thou o israel who is like unto thee o people saved by the lord the shield of thy hell is the shield of your hell who is the sword of thy excellency thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee 2020 prophecy thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee and thou shalt tread upon their high places the lord will help you the lord will lift you up the lord will bless your going out the lord will bless your coming in the Lord will give you help from above. When you are tired, He will lift you up. When you are discouraged, He will encourage you. 
If you seek any time, it will heal you. And when it appears you cannot take another step again, heavenly strength will come to you, you will take further steps. Hell. 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 In your soul. In your spirit. In your body. In your work. In your studies. In your family. In your home. In everything around you. Help in Jesus' name. And then everywhere you go, lend a helping hand over there, help, uh, lend a helping hand over there, lend a helping hand. Your earthly help will produce heavenly help for you everywhere. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. Help has come. Help has come. But you promised the Lord, I will help. I will help. I will help. How was thou helped him that is without power, without food, without money, without clothing, without education, without father, without mother, and without any sustainers? Have you helped your neighbors? Open your mouth to the Lord and say, Lord, I'll be a helping hand. I'll give a helping hand. I'll not go through life just like that, helping no one. I will help spiritually i will help physically i will help materially i will help encouraging them i will help lifting them up i will help tell the lord tell the lord the people are there waiting for us your neighbors are there i will help the children are there waiting for you i will help the youths are there waiting for you i will help whatever i have i have knowledge i'll use that knowledge to help I have some money, I'll use that money to help. I have some clothing, I'll use that, the clothing to help. I have some contacts, I'll use those contacts to help. 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 Help your brother, help your sister, help your wife. Don't always be, don't always be nagging at each other. Help. Don't be beating down each other. Hell. Don't be criticizing each other. Hell. Don't belittle each other. Hell. I will help. I will help. Let the words of my mouth help somebody. Let my action help somebody. Let my music help somebody. Let my instrument help somebody. Let my giving help somebody. Let my showing the way to the blind help somebody. Let my counseling help somebody. Let my teaching, let my preaching help somebody. Help. Help. Help those who are weak. Help those who are downtrodden. Help those who are tired. Help those who are backsliding. Help those who are falling. Help. Help those who are penniless and poor. Help. You see them dying at your side, help somebody. Help the high, they need help too. Help the low, they need help too. Help the men, they need help too. Help the women, they need help too. Help somebody. Physically, help them. Spiritually, help them. You have knowledge they don't have. Help them with that knowledge. You have wisdom they don't have. Help them with that wisdom. They're naked. They need clothing. Help them. They're hungry. They need food. Help them.
They want to go to school. They don't have the wherewithal to make it help them. They want to stand firm, stand strong. But they don't have enough strong backbone. Help them. They want to come out of that life of compromise. But they're shaky. Help them. They want to come out of a bad character. They know that's the bad character hindering them from making progress in life. Help them. Show them the way. Don't look down on them. Don't belittle them. Don't criticize them. Help them. They tell you the story of their lives. Don't just pity them. Help them. Help. And then heavenly help will come to you. Refresh their lives. Bless their lives. Help them. You think you don't have much? That's what the widow thought. I don't have much. I'm cooking the last meal so I eat and, and die with my son. Help. Prepare some for Elijah. And then there'll be heavenly help. Heavenly help. Help them. The local church by your side there, near your house there, needs help. Don't turn your eyes away from them. Help. Some people have got into a rot and they don't know how to come out of that rot. They get into a pit, into a dungeon and they don't know how to come out of the dungeon. Help! Somebody's marriage is almost hitting the rocks. Don't just blame them, criticize them. Help! Help them to see the promise of God. Help them to see the power of God. Help! Help somebody to progress. Help somebody to move forward. Lift up those heavy hands of Moses. Help. Don't just be waiting for others. Help. Initiate the help. Originate the help. Begin with the help. And then heavenly help will come to you. Make a commitment of your life to the Lord. A commitment of your will to the Lord. The selfishness of the past is gone. Eating all I have alone, spending all I have alone, wearing all I have alone, all that is gone. There are people who are less privileged in life 
that you are, help them. Make a commitment, you are help. With no strings attached, I'm helping you. So I'm going to dominate you. Uh -uh. No strings attached. I'm helping you. So I'm going to force you to do this and do that. Uh -uh. No strings attached. Just help. Just help. And what you sow, the reaping will come from above. Offering as they help to receive heavenly help. And don't forget, don't forget, don't allow the message to pass through one ear and go out the other ear. Help. Not just natural help. Tell God to give you grace. So you can go beyond your natural strength in helping. Go beyond the natural man, the natural woman. Let the grace of God become superlative in your life. Help. Trust the Lord, rely on the Lord, underneath you will be the everlasting arms. Don't be neutral when you see other people in need. I don't hate them, I don't hinder them, I don't criticize them. Oh, that is negative. I don't, I don't, I don't. What do you do? Help. Listen to the call. Come over into Macedonia and help us. In Jesus' name we pray. That's good, that's good. 2020, amen now. In Jesus' name we pray. I will be a helper. Where are you? I will be a helper. Heaven's help will be poured abundantly into your life this year in Jesus' name. The covenant messages will not be in vain over you. And the 2020 confirmation will not be in vain over you. Unfailing covenant. Unfailing compensation. Unfailing benefit. Unfailing blessing. In your soul, in your spirit, in your body, in your family, in your profession, in your studies, going out or coming in, at home, and in the church, help will be waiting for you every time. Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you for the revelation you have given us. We're asking, O oh Lord, as we do what you have asked us to do, and we help, and help, and help, without limitation, without tribalism, without sectionalism, without hypocrisy, without selfishness, as we offer 
has laid help to everyone around us, everyone beyond us. Lord, we pray you will not overlook our giving and our help that we offer to all the people in Jesus' name. And Lord, heavenly sunshine, heavenly rain, heavenly blessing, heavenly benefit, heavenly help will come to everyone in Jesus' name. You will not continue crying. You will not continue weeping. You will not continue poor. You will not continue fatherless. You will not continue helpless. Help has come. Hope has come. The grace of God multiply in every life. Help from heaven multiply in every life. Blessings from above multiply in every life. Where you are weak, be strong in Jesus' name. Where you seek, be healed in Jesus' name. Where your prayers be delivered in Jesus' name. May heaven send help your way. May the, all, may the Almighty God send help your way. From now and henceforth, till the end of the year, till the end of your life, heavenly help in Jesus' name. And when eventually you finish your journey here and you will finish well, you will then go into heaven to rejoice forevermore in Jesus' name. Help. 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 From every direction and from heaven, help upon you. Help over you. Help before you. Help behind you. Help around you. You will never lack help. Heaven's help in Jesus' name. Lord, confirm this heavenly help on everybody's life. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Another amen. Let me hear an amen I will remember for the rest of the year. God bless you.